I see a lot of tattooing these days. I mean, I know I'm getting off the page here, but, and I know it's not going to last. It looks great for a photo. Of course it does, you know? And that's what everybody sees. It's just a nice photo. But I think they're extremely selfish. I think they only think about themselves and not their client and not the artwork. Just like, as long as I get a, a great photo, that's it's all that matters. I'm not going to see them in 10, in 20 years. Of course not, but still, you have to think about that, you know? And that's the whole idea about tattooing is it has to last like as long as the owner i think shit's about to go down i'm feeling something in my spirit chops and tats with aaron della vedova hello friends welcome back to the latest episode of chats and tats i'm extra pumped up today because the man I have in here today is not only a very good friend of mine, you know, I've said it many times, tattooing for 30 years now, and there's been a few crux moments in my career that I look back on really fondly, and I'm aware now, hindsight's 2020, how important those moments were. And the time I spent with this guy was one of those moments. He's a huge inspiration to me and has really shaped me to who I am today in many ways, whether he knows that or not. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for him as a, by the way, tattoo artist. And as the years have gone on, he's risen up to become one of the world's most respected Japanese style tattooers out there. You know, Insta famous guys, it makes his world all about like, look at me and look how many followers I have. He's more about putting his nose to the grindstone and doing the work, which is another reason I respect him a lot. So, with all that being said, without further ado, please welcome my guest today, Bill Canales. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Thanks. That was that was a lot, you know. But I really appreciate all those kind words. No, I, I I I really do mean it, Bill. And I don't know if I've ever had the chance to tell you that, but I mean, I maybe. You know, we worked, everyone listening, me and Bill met at Avalon Tattoo. Mm -hmm. I would say 20. It was in 98 when I moved there. Okay. So, and I was already there when you, you were there about a year or so. So new and you came on yeah, board. Yeah. And then we did, I don't know, we were together there, I would say five years or four it's years. Four or something. five for sure. Then I moved to New York for a while, you know. Yeah, you bounced around there for a minute. You Just were trying all over. to find myself to place that, you know, but it all I mean, it all came back here. Everything came back to San Diego. Hence the name of his shop, Full Circle. Full, yeah, full Circle. <laughs> Great name for your journey. Well, I want to go back to that, though. I mean, I'm being I'm being honest with you when I say, like, at that time, if it was, I was there a year. So I was on, like, my third year of professional tattoo and mm. still trying to figure my ass from a hole in the ground. And, and there were some cats there that were definitely teaching. Randy Jansen was a big person for me at that at that time. Juan Puente as well, huge influence. Um, I might be missing someone. I hope I'm not. But you showing up was huge for me. I mean, your commitment to the craft. I mean, you just were so and still are such a regimented, hardworking guy. Like who you you could tell right away. Oh, this dude's not here for the cool factor at all. He is very interested in becoming a master craftsman of this of this trade of this art form. And that was just big for me. I think I was a little more silly goose kid where I was definitely a hard worker and like that in many ways, but I was also just out living the tattoo lifestyle a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest things I learned from you was to be like, whoa, I need to get more serious here. So thank you for that. <laughs> I don't know how serious I, I'm still kind of silly, but you're welcome. Yeah, that was, I mean, you're still, I mean, obviously all the work that you have done put in, I mean, it's obvious that it paid off, you know, I mean, hard work, it did pay off even being, you know, like you said, like silly guy, but you know, I know you are, but still you have, you know, you're extremely, extremely grounded. And I think everything that you've done is worked, you know, I haven't oh. seen anything that haven't done that work or it hasn't it really worked yet, you know, so. Well, I got a couple that I don't talk about. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same, same. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to get uh, some successes in your life without some beatdowns. And yeah. I've had a few. But ultimately, over the, the, the arching curve of it all, things have, have worked out. And I mean, I like that compliment. Thank you, especially from you. I am stoked to announce that Solon Clothing is now a sponsor of the show. I've known Ryan and Jeremy for 20 plus years amazing human beings, huge supporters of the tattoo community. 
If you're a tattoo artist and you want to do a, a t-shirt design with Sullen, you can send that over to design at sullenclothing.com and they would love to see what you've got. Uh, again, thank you, Solon, for your support. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jeremy. And now back to the show. I do like to lately, not lately, but these last few years, I'm really having a, a, this idea in my head of really being more honest about, yeah, I did well. I still do well. We we did good in this industry, but we, timing's a lot. We, we happened to land in an industry that was on the edge of an explosion. Yeah. So that was very, very fortunate for us because we could have put that heart with same shit we did could have in uh 20 or, you know, 20 years before that wouldn't have probably taken us anywhere. We were, we hit it at the right time. Yeah. Well, everything has a timeline, you know, and especially, you know, when we started around 90, well, I started, in, you know, in about 92 ish, you know, and you as well started around 93, 92. Yep. Yep. So that was at, you know, that was like a renaissance of tattooing, I think. Yep. 88 absolutely. through about, I think, 92. That was when everything changed, you know, with Eddie Deutsch and Freddie Corbin and, uh, of course, you know, Mark Pacheco and all these guys, you know, they bought a whole other idea into tattooing that had never been you know, yep. seen before with with their palette, with their, with their line weights, with their contrast, with, you know. And that was, back then, it was like a new school, right? Yeah. You know, it wasn't a tradition at all. Like, wait a second, you can't do this. You can't do that on skin. But they had, you know, the basic rules still applied in their tattooing as far as black, solid color, and, you know, it's heavy shading that was still there. You know, I see a lot of tattooing these days. I mean, I know I'm getting off the page here, but, and I know it's not going to last. It looks great for a photo. Of course it does, you know, and that's what everybody sees. It's just a nice photo, but I think they're extremely selfish. I think they only think about themselves and not their client and not the artwork. Just like as long as I get a, a great photo, it's, it's all that matters. I'm not going to see them in 10 and 20 years. Of course not, but still you have to think about that, you know, and that's the whole idea about tattooing is it has to last like as long as the owner, I think. I know, of course, when you get old, tattoos look you know they look horrible and at a certain age that's the last thing you care about is how they look you know but still you should try to hold it you know for at least 20 30 years you know and not just I mean, two three years that's you know that's not tattooing at all i think you know i feel the same way i mean from the era we come from and you know heck i'm you know guilty of in my early new school years of doing a lot of things that probably weren't the best, but in my defense, we didn't really have anyone telling us differently. You know, it was, I think nowadays guys like me and you, we step in in those situations and educate and help, you know, for at least the guys we work with and girls we work with. But back then it was more of a, you do whatever you want, man. Just, yeah, just yeah. put the money in the drop every week. And, uh, and we're good, you know, and we were set free to experiment. However, I will say those experimental years led to some cool stuff. You know, it's like we didn't just arrive at this neo trad style, which I think is extremely responsible, beautiful work, you know, things by like Lou's Lips and uh, Matt Tischler and these guys, grounded, solid, long lasting neo traditional work. Well, that stuff's here because of the crazy, weird new school stuff that was happening when I was younger that we slowly. That's not working, change it. That's not working, change it. And it slowly became this neo trad movement, I guess you might say. We don't call it new school anymore. Yeah. So I guess those those phases had to happen. And uh, all you guys out there, you're welcome for me, like in the ditches, fucking <laughs> all that stuff up. <laughs> yeah. You were a little more responsible. You always stayed a little more um, on the more traditional approach to tattooing, where I was a little more wild child mm. trying to do different things. But you're right. And I think that. You know, I, I, I'm Buddhist to some degree. I believe in karma on all levels. And I think this particular craft involves a lot of intimate responsibilities to another human being that carry with it a lot of good or bad karma, depending on how you approach that. And to do something that isn't working out of ignorance is probably not going to give you too much bad karma. But when you start knowing better and you're just like, I don't care, yeah. people want micro tats. So I'm doing micro tats because so-and-so in LA has got 250,000 followers and they're doing little miniature crosses on people's pinky nails. And, you know, I'm going to do that because that's what people, you know, just following trends out of the pure, just that'll keep me busy and it'll get me likes on the gram. And it'll, I, 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 my warning to them would be, be careful, man. Karma's real, you know? And I think the people I see 
at the top of the food chain today in tattooing haven't done that. They really tried to be as responsible towards the craft and give it as much respect and honor um, it deserves and the client deserves. I think that long term pays off, you know, long term. I think it does. But, you know, the thing with that is that, you know, OK, we're the old guys now. Right. You know, so to speak, you know, we're not, you know, in like in the 60s, like the 70s yet. So we're not, you know, the true old school guys. Because you're almost 52. 52 I'll be 52 yeah. next month. Yeah. So we're in that range now, I guess, right. you know. I'm I mean, 30 years tattooing. You're 31. 31. So you I know. might be 31. I have to do the math. Yeah. Or I didn't realize how neck and neck, I mean, same as far as our beginnings. Yeah. You know, I wish I knew the day I started. I knew, I, I wish I too. knew in the month I started. I wish I had. I like, wish I had a picture of it. I can't even find one freaking photograph from the first two shops I worked at. Not one. I mean, with the wind. I, I mean, I have those, but I don't have like picture of the day I started or the, you know, I, I would love to have that. Oh, cause, how cool cause, would that be? Cause I know, we, you know, right now, of course, a phone, you know, we didn't have them. all the dates has everything. We didn't even need. have flip phones when we started. No, you have to take a photo and hopefully it comes out in a week or two. Like, <laughs> all right, let's see what happens, you know? But I mean, that was fun. It was exciting to see these things, you know, to not be instantaneously, you know, just, just there, you know? You have to wait. You have to see how it goes, how how it develops. You know, just like a tattoo, like it has to like develop. It's not instant. You know. Yeah. But I think these guys that are in it, of course, today, one day they're going to be the old school guys, right? Yeah. And are they going to have any stories? I don't think so. Are they going to have anything that really they tried or they did or they, you know, it's just going to get more and more watered down. You know, that's how I see it. I mean, I hope. It doesn't, but unfortunately, that's the path that it's kind of leading into, you know? And uh, it sucks, you know, that, I mean, I understand evolution. It has to change. It has to evolve. It has to, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like, of course, machines now. Like, I'm not into coils anymore. You know, I was for, you know, about 30 years, and I loved it. But now it's all about, of course, the pins. And they work, and they're more efficient, and they make just sense. You know, so I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to keep it. Plus, you know, if it adds, you know, to my tattoo, I guess, life, then great. Because, you know, they're easier to handle now. I'm going to keep on those. And I know not everybody's into them, but, you know, I did my time. I did all those coils. You for held years. out longer than most. You know, like if anybody, you know, has any complaints and, you know, I, of course. For those of you who are listening who aren't tattoo artists, what he's talking about is, Forever, or in our era, when we started, it was they were called coil machines. And that's the ones you're typically, you hear that buzzing sound. It's a little magnets that draw an armature bar down and that creates the up and down motion. And what we're, he's using now, what I use now are rotary, battery powered rotary machines. Um, and that's kind of the, the the new new the cutting edge of, of tattoo equipment is I think most people are on those now. Yeah, I mean a lot of them are and a lot of them aren't because you know I understand it's not a piece of art anymore. It's just a machine. Yeah, yeah. and the they coils to, were yeah. they, they were handmade. They were they looked amazing. They were great. And I love the way they looked. They felt they the sound. You know I I just miss that. But you know now all my coils I have them in a case. And you know maybe one day I'll. I'll kind of break them out for old school day or something. I don't know. But I got a feeling that I won't touch those things again. You know, it That's sucks because they're just, oh, they're there, you know, and it feels so bad. They're just, they're just kind of looking at me or something. You well, know? I have a list here. You just jump to like phase three. Right All there. right. Because right. I do want to get deeper into your mm -hmm. thoughts around, you know, where we were, where we ended up and where we're headed. I think that's a profound discussion. But before we get to that, I kind of wanted to start a little more behind that. I'm always interested in people that end up in this craft and how they ended up here. I mean, and it always starts with first, usually it starts with um, art. Like when, when did you know or know you were an artist when did that occur for you I'm, I'm assuming there was some doodling going on as a kid and at some point you were like whoa i'm i'm pretty good at that tell me that story well as far as the art story goes i know that it started in about the third grade right mm -hmm. i i know that as a fact because obviously i was there but i mean you know there was this kid in my class his name was ernie i, I can't remember his last name but he was an artist in, in the third grade and he drew and drew and Everybody liked him and everybody wanted to hang out with him. And I was an introvert, right? And uh, I was an extremely shy kid. And, you know, this kid that drew, he was he was popular. He had friends. And then I thought, well, maybe if, if I draw, maybe I'll have friends and I'll be popular and all that stuff, you know? So I think that's what was the 
I think, catalyst of me of me drawing because you don't need anybody to draw. You don't need anybody around you, you know, to get into that. You know, it's not a sport. It's like you have to be alone. You got to be in yourself, you know, and that if we're an introvert, that's what you want. You know, you don't want to be around other people. And yes, the idea was to get people around you, of course, to like you and, and to be friends. But in order for that to happen, you have to do this alone, I think, first. And that's what I did. And I drew and drew and drew. I went home and just practiced, practiced, practiced all the time. And then, yeah, of course, you know, I was still like an introvert for, you know, years and years and years and years. But artwork did. I did produce a few friends and connections and it did help. I gave you a lot of self-worth and self-respect and self-love too. Like, I'm good at something. I'm... But yeah, I mean, but to say that I was uh, I was good at it, I couldn't really, really say it because I didn't have anything to measure it from or or to, you know. So all of my friends didn't, you know, they didn't draw, they didn't do anything. I didn't understand how to how to practice this, how to practice that. You know, I looked at comic books, I looked at other things, you know, just gauge if I was, you know, doing it right. So that's what I started like in third grade, you know, and it kept on going until until now, of course, you know. Right. And then at some point, so that's the that's the beginning of you creating an identity as an artist and realizing this might be a pathway for you in this world and this life. It's the origin story for sure. You know? Yeah, the origin of it all, where it, where it begun. And, and I think that's pretty, I, my, my story's the same. I mean, different stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah, being like, feeling um, like, what can I do to have people like me? What, what can I do where people will walk up and say, good job, you're cool, you know, that's mm -hmm. cool. And I don't know, I, I'll, I've said it before on the show, but I still remember, I, I mean, I can't believe I remember this. Maybe I've made this memory up because it's hard to believe I can remember something from like, like kindergarten, first grade. But I, I remember draw, my, my uncle Bobby would visit and we, this is in Iowa. And back then the thing to do is to go to the, the track on the weekends and watch funny cars race. Mm. And, you know, I don't yeah. know people listening to what a rail is a rail is a certain kind of funny car those long yeah, skinny yeah. ones i did the same thing you drew funny cars no 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 Even my dad was into that stuff oh so you would take you out to the he races every weekend remember jake the snake yeah you yeah. remember that dude yeah. he was the, the red white and blue with the cobra on the side it was, it was something else it was something else i mean even just the artwork of being at the funny car races mm -hmm. was sort of its own thing they had all the cars were airbrushed with their custom shit yeah. i'd be like well i'm gonna draw cobra when i go home but i drew this funny car it was a rail you know just profile view with a motor on the back and my uncle bobby who i thought was the coolest dude in the world who had drawn a few he looked at it and he said aaron you drew this i'm like yeah he goes you're an artist dude and i mean it's so weird to think that you know literally in my mind that the guy a god just told me what i am and as far as i was concerned that was that was it he he knows everything and i was it i was an artist and that was my identity from that point on and it's kind of the same thing for those same reasons just to have people like me and find something i'm good at and get a pat on the head once in a while you know let's get back to you so then that cruises you and then at what point does tattoo come into the picture i think tattooing it didn't you know i didn't know anything about it for years i mean ever since i was in school high school i you know everything that i saw was just you know, just crude. It wasn't anything like artistic. It wasn't anything, you know, very interesting. So, and the people that had these tattoos, of course, back then, maybe you didn't want to be around those people, you know? Yeah. But, you know, it's just a thing where I was at a store, I think it was Circle K, and my friend, he worked there, you know, his back in El Paso, and he worked a midnight shift. And, you know, we'd always, you know, go there and hang out, eat, you know, free hot dogs or, you know, whatever. And, you know, they had some magazines on the rack. And the first one, you know, that I saw was, you know, this tattoo magazine. It looked interesting. And, of course, the cover was, you know, was flashy. had a girl on it. Just thought, all right, you know, I'll check it out. And then when I opened it, it had these amazing tattoos that I didn't even think you could do on skin. So that just kind of sparked it just right there. Like, I didn't know any of this stuff was possible. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like I said, everything that I had seen wasn't anything. So, like, well, okay. And then... That was, you know, the point where I'm like, huh, all right. So I looked more into it. And then they had a contest in this magazine where, you know, you draw some artwork and then, of course, you like submit it. And if you win, you know, a full page is a hundred bucks, a three quarter page, you know, it's whatever it is. So I'm like, huh, all right, I'm going to go home and I'm going to draw some ideas and hopefully I'll send it in and, you know, see what happens. So I went home, drew, drew, drew. Uh, I mailed it out, waited a few weeks of course, pass about like a month passes. Then I get a letter in the mail saying I won. 
you know nice. so it was 100 bucks so there's a full page or you know full page and i was blown away and then they also printed other things do you that still I have that them. yeah 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 I, oh that's so cool I, I still have that so with that hundred i ordered a tattoo kit right mm. so i i reinvested that money you know and this kit that i got it was for like 100 bucks it came with some needles that were you know was it a huck spalding kit no it was from, something a, it lower, was, a layer it was, beneath that <laughs> it wasn't even a kit you know but uh <laughs> It came with inks, with a design, with uh, ink cap, you know, with everything that you need. Mm -hmm. And then it came with a machine that wasn't a machine. It was like some type of just a motor attached onto like a like a like a pin casing. Okay. And then a needle was you know kind of taped onto like a I guess like a sturdy stick, you know. <laughs> Holy shit! And I thought this is what a machine is like. All right, so I put it all I guess together. I didn't know how far or how deep or how anything and so you know and i figured well i gotta tattoo myself you know and that's what i did so <laughs> i picked the design and it was like cow skull i thought it was it was cool back then and put it on my arm so i tattooed my arm for the first one right and i know you're not supposed to core tattoo your arm it's supposed to be your leg or even something well, easy a little to more reach. difficult <laughs> but i didn't know i didn't understand you know i was ignorant about access and plus you probably wanted to tat on your arm if your friends could see it you know and so I did it. I can't remember how long it took, whatever, but I know it probably took a while, you know, and it was done and I felt six feet tall, you know, and uh, <laughs> it was, you know, because I was the first one in my in my group that had anything like this. I didn't know anybody that had this, you know, and of course I hid it from my mom for about a year or so because, you know, I was just, you know, you don't do that, you oh, know, no. and, you know, after a year, I, you know, I know she already knew she, but I think she just made me kind of suffer, you know, for that year, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, I'm going to tattoo some friends, you know. So I found some friends. It was like the town, he drunk. So, you know, I tattooed him, tattooed a few other people. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I messed them up, you know. So then I figure I got to, this isn't the way to do it. There's got to be a way that I could ask a question or learn or I don't know. I didn't even know there was like a apprenticeship thing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand how to how the process even goes and so you know the first shop that i went into it was closed so like well i guess i'm not going there so i drive down the street and you know this street like in el paso it's it's where like all the bad stuff is all the pawn shops all the hookers all the porns you know just that uh, just a bad area i figured if i'm gonna learn how to tattoo it's over there you know so i went down there and then i found this other shop and it just opened about a few months i think i think previous and I walked in and I had a drawing with me just, and I didn't know what I was going to do with this, you know, this drawing. I guess just, you know, just show them, just see what they think. And uh, so it was, I was really into, you know, Chrome back then. I did a lot of Chrome, a bunch of robots and, you know, just really into that stuff, you know? And so I took it in, uh, I showed the owner and uh, he said, oh yeah, this, you know, it was about, I don't know, maybe eight inches by four inches. It was huge, you know? I said, yeah, yeah, you know, if we tattoo this, we could probably do it for 200 bucks, you know. It would have taken all day probably, you know. Right, right. But 200 bucks back then, it was great, you know, <laughs> easy money. So I'm like, okay, you know, obviously I don't have 200 bucks, you know. But then he asked, did you or, you know, did you draw this? Said, yeah, yeah, it was, it was my drawing. Then I had a couple other ones and he saw them and he was like, hmm, all right. And right at, at that point, he asked me if I want to learn how to tattoo, you know. And I was like, yeah, I didn't know anything about how or what, you know, but he said, yeah, of course, you know, I think, I think you'd be great. You know, I think, you know, just come here every day and we could, you know, start the whole kind of process. It'll take maybe you know, six months and then, you know, each week you'd probably make two, three hundred bucks a week. And I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So I quit my job. I didn't tell my mom because you know it's a tattoo thing and it wasn't you know it's not the thing that you no. they go down that that is that is not the path that that your kids should take back then yeah, yeah. it is now you know but in back then it wasn't so you know i go there and uh you know i don't really you know take the i guess apprenticeship you know kind of role he doesn't have me clean things or, or do things it's just it's just watching so i thought all right well, it's pretty easy and then he made me of course, start tattooing, and I have to do a hundred of these, you know, you know, free tattoos. And you know, there's a bunch of GIs, there's a bunch of you know people that 
who want you know, free work. It's, it's, you know, I said it's easy. And so I did 100. After 100, he said, all right, I think you're ready to go. And that was you know six months. So six months I was already tattooing. And that was extremely scary. And it was, it, and you know, it shouldn't have been that way. But it was. And I learned a lot and, you know, thrown into the fire and, you know, see what happens. And I'm glad it went down that way. You know, I wouldn't change it now. You know, it was it was like supposed to happen like that, you know. And then after that, you know, of course, it keeps going and going. But, you know, that's how it, I guess, originated. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's the, uh, those stories are getting more rare in, yeah. in, in our day and age. Unfortunately. Yeah. No, and, you know, that kind of leads me to one of the things I cherish after 30 years to now or 31, whatever it is, years of tattooing is guys like us. I, I always say we got the full ride, like mm-hmm. meaning we got in when it was still whatever i don't want to give it a label but it was in the it was in that neighborhood mm-hmm. that's a good way to put it yeah. that's where tattoo shops existed um this dude that taught you he wasn't a biker or a no gang he was member? uh he was in the army and then uh so you I, got lucky yeah because the odds were in those days 90 percent of shops were owned by the gangs yeah and you wandered into one that was not gang that was owned. not that was extremely rare i got super lucky you got an angel um, on your shoulder dude i wandered into the other ones yeah <laughs> on accident oh. but that good for you right but yeah. still but we got the full even in that way i mean you didn't get the um exposure to some of that crazy shit maybe as much but still the ride we got to be a part of from where tattooing was at that time to what we already talked about earlier with the the, the whole renaissance from the late 80s through there the new school movement all those things to where it is today i mean i feel like i'm bragging but i feel like we got the best ride you could possibly get if you were to be in heaven looking down deciding i want to go to earth and be a tattooer what what phase what years do you want to start and retire that's the window if you want to really get the deepest most colorful experience i think You know, and I, I mean, I don't, the guys are getting in now. I mean, it's great. It's a, it's a respected professional industry. It's a great career if you're good at it, but they're never going to get that. They're never going to have those memories of where it was to where it is. And I, I, I really cherish that. And that's what I'm saying. It is extremely like watered down now. And it sucks that those are gone, you know? Yeah. You know, they could still be there here and there, but it's extremely rare now. But, you know, I, at least, at least we had a taste of it. So, and then after that. Who knows, you know, but, you know, I kind of miss those days. You know, I'm glad they're kind of over, but, you know, at least I could I could reflect and understand, you know, just what I have at the moment to eat, eat what I had. And uh, it's, it's a big, big change. And, you know, but it is work constantly, constantly work. It's not like I just lay back now. No, it's even harder now, I think, you know, because of the amount of tattooers that are out there. The amount of shops that are out there, the amount of information that is out there. Like you got to be even more on top of your game than ever before, I think. Yeah, you do. That kind of leads me to some of the things, other things I want to talk about. One of them is that, like, you know, getting into tattooing now, it's weird because I'll have people come to me who want apprenticeships and stuff. You know, the old me, like 10 years ago, I would immediately, if they had any talent at all, I would highly recommend becoming a tattooer. I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah. 10 years ago, maybe, maybe a little more. And now I'm doing this weird thing where I'm like, I don't know what to say to them anymore. I'm kind of like, I don't know. They're like, well, you think I could do it? Do you think it'll work? And, I, and I'm like, I don't know. Because I don't know. I only know what's happening in tattooing right now, which is highly, highly competitive. You are going to be competing against some extremely talented people. Um, and you're not even tattooing yet. Like you're not even going to be even good at this shit for probably three more years. And then there's going to be that many more. So it's like, I, I feel, I don't feel like making those promises to them anymore. I'm just like, I don't know. You might make it. You might not. One thing I can tell you is you better be fucking good. Cause this career isn't good. It's not a great career when you're in the, in those lower ranks. It's, it's pretty good at the top, that temp, top 10% up there. There's good money to be made and it's respected and it's a fun, it's a good career. But if you can't get to there, it's, I wouldn't recommend coming into the space anymore. It's just way too competitive. Wouldn't you agree with that? I think so. And the reason is because there's information out there that extremely, it's just accessible now. Videos you got, seminars you got, workshops you got everything out there that you want there's and you don't have to travel to them you just pull it right up on your phone i mean it's to get taught how to tattoo by some of the best tattoo artists in the world yeah and it's it's i mean 
again, I'm not that old school guy. We're like, oh, I wish. No, you know, I get it. That's just how it's going. And it's going to keep going like that. We can't can't stop it. Of course not. You know, we can complain about it, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's going to keep happening. And tattooers are only going to get better. But they're going to be very, how do you say it? There's no soul there. There's nothing in the background. You know, there's nothing... Again, there's no stories. And maybe those core stories don't really matter. Who knows? You know, maybe it only matters to you. You know, it doesn't matter to, you know, your clients or anything else. Because, you know, when your client gets tattooed by you, they don't know what you did, how you got here. All they know is that this guy does a great tattoo or or this girl does a great tattoo. And that's it. That's all they want. You know, and that's what I try and give them is a great tattoo every time. And I can admit, I don't hit a home run every time. I get on base, of course, you know, but every so often, yeah, like I do a great tattoo, you know, it is not a science, it is a craft. And with any craft, you know, it's not going to be a perfect craft every single time, you know, but you only have like one shot every time, though. You don't have a practice run on this client. No, like when you, of course, tattoo them, it has to be on point all the time. And I try my best, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I get ready, I get I get prepared. It's, you know, and it's hard, man. And I know the older that I get, you know, I don't know. I'm, I know I shouldn't be, of course, putting this in my head, but I know it's going to get harder. You know, it probably is. You know, my hands aren't going to be the same. My eyes are going to be the same. I probably can't you, you do it as long. You know, there's certain things that are going to fail eventually. And it well, sucks. Let's, let's get into that. Oh, that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about and not done because I'm in the same boat. 31 years tattooing. How many days a week are you tattooing on average? Four days a week now. Four days a week. How many hours? What's your preferred session? How many hours of tattoo time? Not set up, break down, tattoo talking. Time. I mean, I could I could go for easily six, seven hours in one shot. Easily. No problem. You know. Hmm. You know, and stronger I, than me. And I, I like five. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it's probably I, healthier. It's probably better for you at five, you know. Mm. But I put myself through a certain kind of like, I guess, I guess just regimen of uh, you know, I'll suffer just as you know, the client, I think, is suffering, mm-hmm. you know, and not in a sense of pain wise, but I'm going to put my body through things that are probably going to come back to me, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and my wife tells me this all the time, like, you got to take care of yourself because, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I don't know if it's if if it's that, you know, that kid again in, in the third grade that like, well, maybe if I keep on being this this way and work harder that more people will like that and they'll get more you know for their buck and it'll be it'll be better like for them and and they'll like me more and you know it all comes back to certain things in childhood for some odd reason you know and it can't you know and i can't get that out of my head you know i have gotten through that a bit i don't tattoo as much as you and i haven't for years i'm probably well, with the sh- the show, this is a unique time because I started this show. So now my this last I mean, the show has been out for six months. So I knew when I did this, tattooing was going to really take a little bit of a backseat. It had to. I can't simultaneously do this project and that. But let's go before that. Before the show, I before that for the last few years, I was uh, three days a week, and like I said, five hours is my number. I will do a six and a seven. If the guy's got a flight to catch and I'm going to finish a sleeve, then I'm not going to make him fly back for two hours. So I'll, I'll stretch it. But if there's those parameters aren't there three days a week, five hours and making the step into that was connected to, it's almost like my mind was telling me to, to back off was the beginning of the, the end. Like if you, the, the second I would back off that the whole thing was going to crash mm. because the program of 25 years of tattooing was set in my mind. No, this is what it takes to be successful. And to even take one extra day off, what happens next one day off? And then the whole thing's just going to implode. And it didn't, of course. And I did it for the reasons that Becky recommended your wife recommended you do it, which was sort of like, I mean, we own shops too, dude. I mean, it's like, I've got two locations. You've got two locations, 20 plus tattooers. I mean, I won't get into it, but my my wife and I own a med spa, a laser tattoo removal company. You've hosted conventions. It's like, yeah, man, dude, how much, uh, you know, you got to, something's got to give when you got all those things to manage, plus wife, plus kids. And you have all those things as well. We're in the same boat, two kids, wife. We're kind of very similar, two shops, you know? So it's impressive that you, you still go at that, that pace. Um, I'm with Becky. I think you should go to three days a week. Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, believe me, I know that, you know, and I should do that. Yes, but in my in my head, it's still work, work, work. And, you know, I got a lot of friends that have, you know, that have a family. And of course, the family should come first. I understand that, you know, but it's hard for me to get out of that. You know, I've had this even before I ever had my family, before I ever met Becky. You know, I had I had tattooing. That was, it, you know, the first love, you know. And it's hard to step away, you know, from that to like just not, you know, do it as much. You know, I'm good at one thing, okay. And if that's one thing is, you know, taken away even a, a little bit, you know, it hurts. You know, so I want to do one thing as long as I can, as hard as I can, you know. And I will, you know. I know that I could probably do it for six days a week, but then. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to get divorced and I'm going to have this thing. You know, things are going to start to fall apart because of that, you know. But I love tattooing, you know, and I'm amazed that I found it. And I'm at a point where it just really works. And I want to hold on to that, you know. I don't want to let that go because once it's gone, it's it. I'm not going to be doing anything amazing when I'm in, in my 60s, especially like I'm in 70s. You know, it's super limited now. I'm at the fall of my of my career, I think, you know, not at the winter, but for sure at the end of the fall, you know, and it's closing in and, you know, I know my time is limited in at least tattooing. So I'm going to, I'm going to go as hard as I can for as long as I can. And I'll pay for it later. You know, it's future bills problem, you know, but right now I, I'm able to do it. So I'm, I'm going to do it, you know, as long as I can. I mean, if it's working, it's, it's it, it is working. Yeah, you and Becky are married. You're still in love. You're raising your kids. You're running your business. You're tattooing four days a week, six seven hours a day. It's working. And until something, you see something breaking down. There's no need, right? But it is true what you said. I have the same thoughts. You know, of uh, well, can I really be doing this at all these things at this pace in my sixties? I don't know. I mean. And I'm with you. I'm not going to really make those decisions until they're forced upon me because I don't know. Perhaps I'm in my 60s and I've had enough stem cell drips to where I'm still cranking and I feel great, you know, or or perhaps I'm 62 and I'm having trouble standing up straight because my back is fucked. And then I'll, then I'll know it's time to go to yoga classes more and tattoo less, whatever, you know. And on that note, I mean, let me ask you that because you're a highly driven guy with a lot going on, just your own tattoo clients managing that, tattooing those people. I know from doing it for, like you, that's its own. Most, you know, you talk to tattooers that just have your tattoo schedule and they, yeah, I have them, they work here and they come to work. They are not married. They, have, they don't even have a pet. They have no children. They're tattooing four or five days a week and they're, having panic attacks at the drawing table, like overwhelmed, you know? And of course I'm empathetic and sympathetic and I try to like help people out. But there's also a part of me that kind of chuckles. Like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like I tattooed more than that with the wife, with the kids, with the businesses. So boo fucking who, come on, pull your big boy pants up. Let's get it done. But you know, at, what do you do? I guess is my question. What do you do? Like what's your like diet, exercise, meditation, sleep, what's a, what's your routine to keep your body functioning and your mind functioning so that you can work at this pace? Well, I mean, as far as exercise, I am not a fan of it. I could really care less about it, you know? Cause and, you look, I mean, you're a fit guy. I mean, yeah, yeah. for a guy your age has been tattooing that long with no exercise, usually you're just obese, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and you're not. So no, you no, must no. be doing something. I mean, I eat, you know, super basic. I don't eat a lot. So that's a major thing, you know? I take my dog for a walk. I guess that's exercise in a way, but it's not much, you know. But as far as a tattoo day, okay, let's let's break that down. I, I get up early. I eat a lot of, you know, I eat a lot, you know, to hold me over for at least eight. What are you, what are you eating? Uh, eggs. Uh, you know, there's some vegetables. There's, uh, um, there's fruit. So, Obviously, there's so coffee. Very healthy there's, breakfast. Yeah. I mean, I try and have uh, you know just enough to hold me over for x amount of time right mm -hmm. drink uh, like a lot of water of course because it's like a marathon you know it's going to be a long day i want to be prepared for it i don't want to have a lag you know i want to be as 100 percent as i can that day for my client okay because you know they've already waited x amount of time who knows a year or even more you know to get tattooed i want to be ready 
for them. And it's, you know, and you're just a professional. That's what you have to do. That's how you do it, you know? I'm there, you know, before they even arrive. I'm always at the shop an hour, you know, before at least. Got to get prepared. Got to get ready, you know? So you know, the whole day, okay, and I explain this also to my clients, you know, eat right, you know, just make sure that you sleep right. There's no drinking, blah, 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 blah. Just be ready for the day. So when we start, you know, like, if I tattoo them, I want to tattoo them six hours straight. You know, if they need a break to use the restroom, okay. But there's no lunch, there's no hanging out, they're just like straight tattooing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't drink any water, I don't eat anything throughout the day because if I drink water, I gotta use the restroom. If I use the restroom, that takes away from, of course, their time. And the X, you know, I've added all that up. If I drink X amount of water, I have to go to the restroom X amount of time. <laughs> that breaks down an hour, probably gone. You know, if you break it down in, into like six hour day, because you go, of course, restroom takes about maybe 10 minutes. You, you know, just do things and then you come back and that's hour gone. Right. I don't charge him for that hour that I'm gone. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you break it down into that. So you add that hour per day, per week, per month, per year, you know, I'm yeah. really losing how, <laughs> you know, in, in the tens of thousands probably, you know, so. But, you know, that's that's a very idiotic way to see it. You know, yes, it should take a break because, of course, you know, if I don't, if I don't drink water, don't do this, then, of course, medical bills are going to be a lot more than that, you know, <laughs> I mean, eventually. But, you know, it's like, I guess it's like fasting, right? I mean, I'm people that do it for eight or nine hours or even 16 hours and they're fine, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just fasting throughout the day because if I do eat, if I do take a break, I get like lethargic. I get, I get tired. I'm not at utmost, I think, you know, because, you know, the blood now is in, you know, your belly now. It's not up here anymore, you know. So if I'm busy, you know, I don't get hungry. I don't get, I don't get thirsty. I don't get headaches, you know, because, um, you know, it's more like just driven to do as, you know, as much as I can, as hard as I can for that X amount of time to give them you know, the most that they need or, you know, that they ask for. And, you know, I could finish just leaving a day. I could, you know, I might do certain things in, you know, six hours that like a lot of people can't do because it's just go, 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 go as hard as I can, as fast as I can, you know? So, and, you know, at the end of that, that day, you know, and that client is beaten up, right? They are a mess of a person, you know? So, and, but they asked for it. They understood what you're getting into, right? And, and of course they leave, they're okay, they're a bit kind of, you know, shaken, but they had an experience that day, right? That, you know, a lot of people don't have experiences nowadays. They don't know what their body can handle. They're never, ever tested at that capacity, you know? And, and my clients are, you know, they're tested all the time, you know? So they really, I think they get the most for, you know, for like anything, you know, it's, 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 I guess it's the biggest bang, I guess, for your buck, you know, is what it is, you know, and and that's what I'm going to keep doing. And then wrap it up. So now the tattoo day is done. I get that. And then what? Big old dinner, bed, and do it again. Yeah, I try and get eight hours sleep, you know. But that, you have dinner. Yeah, I got to eat, of course. Okay, yeah, but so it's a small dinner, though. Okay. I don't want to eat a huge hunk of right. dinner because then what? You know, I got to stay up for X amount of hours, you know, to digest, you know. Right, right. I need to just, you know, have a, a light, light dinner have a tequila at, at the end of the day, which is, of course, my favorite, you know, so I do that. And then go to sleep up by five, get my drawing in, you know. And do it again. And do it again. And be at work by, by 10, start at 11, you know, okay. four days a week. I like that. I love hearing guys at your level, just the, the life, like the routine, right? Because that's what it needs to become to really do many, many, many years of productivity and be, make it sustainable. Like, what are you doing to keep it sustainable? It, and I'm very, I'm different, little, but similar, especially in regards to the not eating. I do drink water while I tattoo. I drink, you know, uh, but uh, but I do eat really, that's my thing too. I like to get here out, all the stuff you said. I like to eat a small thing of like high protein food before I start my day, a couple hard boiled eggs, a can of sardines, just a little wad of protein. And I know after that, I can go for the next... I only tattoo five hours, but I know I'm going to be, I'm not going to see food again for probably six or seven. By the time I talk, get tattooing, wrap it up, drive home, 45 minute drive home, all that. So I know it's seven hours till I see food again, but I got a time just about right. Like right when I pull in my driveway, I'm hungry. 
I go in, wife's got a healthy meal ready usually. I eat that, into bed, and repeat. And I, I agree with you too, like there's something to be said about how the mind is when you don't have a belly full of food or you know what I mean? When you just keep it light, like you, I feel it. You know, that, that happened to me probably 10 or 15 years ago. The routine at tattoo shops was always like, you do a tattoo, then you go to lunch. And at lunch, everyone's getting like a carne asada burrito and a horchata. You know, I did those at Avalon back in the day. And I remember that second tattoo, the after lunch tattoo was like, what is happening to me? I, my brain's fucked up. I, it was horrible. It made the that second half of the day horrible. As so I'm just like you, like, let's just get some protein in the belly, crank on some tattooing, wrap it up, go home, eat again, rest, do again. So that's, that's, I think you'd probably find that rhythm with most tattooers that are tattooing like, like we do, especially large format stuff where every session is for you six, seven hours for me five. But yeah, that's a good healthy. I figured you would have said that. It's nice to know. Yeah. But you know, it's like, you have to also, you keep that going on your days off though. You yeah. know, you can't, you can't change it up. Cause then you got to get back into that routine again. I need a, you don't have one cheat day. You don't have one day a week where like the kids are, you're, you're the barbecue and the hot dogs and somebody brings over the big old cake. It's like, well, it's my day off. I'm going to have more than one tequila. No, and I'm, of course, of course, I mean, you have to, but I mean, you still have to, you know, I'm trying to go to bed at least, at least 10 or 1030, you know, in order to be up at a certain time. And, you know, I don't want to go to bed like midnight or at one. I can't, you know, I don't have to be out there anymore. I don't have to be out there, you know, at the club, at the bar or, you know, wherever, because I could care less about that stuff anymore. You know, I think my like priorities now are just, of course, work and family. And that's that. I don't want to be that person out there, you know. Only because there's nothing out there for me anymore. You know, it used to be great. Like in your 20s, of course you want to be out there. And I was out there like in my early, I guess, tattoo career. You know, I was that guy out every day, every night, you know, doing coke all the time. And I, I love that stuff back then. You know, I don't regret that at all. But I mean, I don't do it anymore, of course, because I know that, you know, that was a young me, you know, and I'm glad I got all that out of me, you know. You know, I did some horrible stuff when I was a kid, but now it's done, you know? Yeah, no, well, that's true. That, that is, you, you got to find a sustainable model. This is a back-breaking industry. Like, it's sitting for hours on end, bent over somebody. You know, I, I'm really, I'm surprised you, you're doing, I, I get it now with your diet routine and sleep that you get by without the exercise component. That's something I have always done, still do. It's not a lot, you know? I lift some weights a couple of days a week for 45 minutes in my home gym. And I usually try to make a yoga class and I have been consistent with my yoga for a good 15, 18 years, two, three days a week. If I'm lucky, I have weeks where I don't make it, but, but you know, over the years you add it up, I've been to probably a few thousand yoga classes that saved me. I, I, I had 15 years ago, uh, a cramp underneath my left shoulder blade, you know, the stretching arm, the one that pushes the skin around. I don't know what happened. The muscle locked up and I couldn't straighten my left arm. I couldn't drop it out or I would get this gnarly pain. Went to all these specialists, all these people, the acupuncturists, the chiropractors, the muscle relaxers. Would go away, come back, go away, come back. Finally landed in a yoga class after three months of yoga, went away and I've never seen it since. So I was kind of forced into this yoga and I, and I, I, I made a connection where I, I was like, I will always do yoga. I do have a feeling if I were to quit that for me, I think something would start not working right, but you've made it without the exercise. That's impressive. Yeah. And you know, and it goes back to my wife, you know, she plays tennis all the time. She's exercising all the time and you know, she loves it, but you know, it has to come like for me, I mean, don't tell me to do things cause I won't even try and do it now, you know, but you know, I understand it's important. Yes, you know, I get it. But I choose not to do it, though, knowing that I probably should do it. But it's just extremely boring to me. You know, I don't find any interest in that whatsoever, you know. And I know that, you know, here in California, especially, it's a thing. Everybody does it, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, maybe the day that I need it, the day I'll start. But, you know, right now. No, I no. won't do it. You know, that's cool. stay away. I don't know. I know a lot of people that are in their 60s and 70s who never exercise a day in their life, but they ate well, slept well, and they seem to be doing, I don't know. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. I mean, sleep is so important. I don't think people understand that yeah. you need eight hours is what you need, man. Yeah. It, I get my eight every night. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people get less, but that's yeah. just me. What about burnout? You don't ever feel burnt out? You don't have days. I mean, this is a pretty steady routine that you haven't changed ever your whole career. You have never taken a hiatus or a massive 
break. I don't even think you take really extended vacations. And if you do, it's probably to a convention. No burnout for you? I mean, we take vacations, you know, and, you know, there's family trips that we do all, you know, all the time. And it's great. But as far as like burnout, no, no, I don't see how anybody could burn out doing the thing that they love, that they're passionate about. You can't, you know, you won't, you shouldn't. And if you do, then it's not your passion then. You know, this is my passion. This is my thing. Like I said, it's the one thing that I do good at. So of course I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop this, you know? I'm gonna keep this thing going as long as I can, as hard as I can. And there is no burnout. The day that it comes is the day that it's over. That's it, you know? And the day that it's over is gonna be a horrible day. Horrible, you know? Cause then that's it. What's your purpose? You know? There's nothing. Yes, you know, family, but by that time, you know, kids are gonna be gone off the call or off to who knows where, you know? You don't have any visualization in your mind about what it looks like to be a 72-year-old man not tattooing anymore? What your daily routine? I mean, you all, you're you a prolific painter as well. I mean, I, I think about that too. Like, the day comes, I'm not tattooing anymore. I, you know, I, I don't want to just pick up golf, you know? Like, I'll probably, I, I don't know what I'll do, but I think I'll paint more. I think painting is an option, of course, you know? But I, I look at artists like, Horyoshi the third out in Japan, and he's still tattooing six days a week, and he's maybe close to eighty. Damn. You know, so he is a machine still, and he's on court dialysis. He's not at a great age anymore. I mean, he is, but that's maybe, I didn't know that. But maybe that's a Japanese mentality as well. You know, yeah, but he's still going. Let me ask you about that. You might know this question. I've been trying to. You know more, I think, than I do on him. But is it true that he does one-hour sessions? I've heard that he he does, and the reason is because he has he, he clients that get, of course, you know, body suits. So you know they you know they come in once a week and get about you know forty-five minutes at a time, which is easy to handle. Uh, forty-five minutes at a time, you know. I mean, every week it's like you know, going to a yoga class, you know. Like this is just your routine. This is, you have to do. Have to I do. I mean, it. I have to say, and no, I don't want to show any disrespect for him because obviously, I do respect his work and you know everything about his career and what he's done for our industry. It's just I can't. That doesn't seem very efficient. I it's mean, probably, you got to set up. You got to break down. He's doing probably four or five or six of those people a day. It's a lot of burn time on setups and breakdowns. Just getting ready for the next client. When I mean, like you, just sit down. Let's go six hours plus. You know, and I know, the human body has everything in it it needs for four minimum. Like people really, I rarely have a person hit the wall before four hours. Everyone's mm. got four hours. Yeah, yeah, Five yeah. gets a little in that area, like maybe a little tougher characters. Sixes and sevens are your core, like grit their teeth, we're getting it done. But 45 minutes seems like, why would the guy's just getting warmed up his endorphins just kicked in give him another couple of hours i don't know it's just a very odd you yeah, don't I nobody know. else works like that that i've ever heard of i think it's i don't know if it's again like a japanese thing that that they do it you know like that over there for certain artists but from you know my understanding that's how it is i could be wrong as well but mm -hmm. i've heard from a few sources you know that that's how it's done so right. and I got tattooed by him uh, back in 2015, and uh, you know, it was at about, his studio. Yeah, at his yeah. studio, it, and it was about 45 minutes done, easy. You know, it was quick. You know, and uh, but um, you know, it was just you know, you had to get I you know I want to get tattooed by him, you know, but I don't want to be a novelty at the end of my you know career as well. I don't want to be that guy where like, oh, I, I got to get that tattooed by him before he dies. You know, I don't want to be that, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe that's what happens to older tattooers. You're just, you know, you're just, you're just probably, you know, signing your name on a person at that point. Right, you know, right. you're not, you're not doing anything special, you know, yeah. just in that, there you go. I won't do you that know? either. I mean, maybe I will, but I want to say it right now, if I can't come in and do the, the way I do it now, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, personally. But who knows? That could change with time. Yeah, That's cool. You got tattooed by him. That kind of leads me to another thing I wanted to ask you about is your collaboration with Philip Liu. And before I get into that, I must tell you, I don't know if you know this, but you know, 
my journey in tattooing, you know, the early years, just, you know, learning from bikers and crazy people and just, just whatever came through the door type stuff. Then it moves to Avalon and I start curating a new school style and I'm, you know, making that work. And I still don't know much of anything. And one day I opened up a magazine and I don't forget, it must've been tattoo or tattoo international. I don't know. Philip blue article pictures of him in some studio somewhere with charcoal doing those body suits. And that for me was, I don't know, Philip, if you ever hear this, it changed my career. I remember for the first time in my life being like, whoa, 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 design a tattoo to cover the body that isn't a traditional Japanese, um, you know, Yakuza looking style or whatever you want to call that. He was getting, it was obviously Japanese motif, but he was being very uh, progressive with it, you know, and as you know, anyway, it was that, that was the day I started painting these body, you know, I've had these bodysuit shows, by the way, segue bodysuit show this year, commitment three, you're doing a, a piece for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody listening commitment three, nothing but bodysuits painted by some of the world's best tattooers on November 11th at the Adams Avenue theater here in San Diego, normal Heights honor to have you part of that show. Thank you. All right, enough with my shameless plug, back to the story. But yeah, that changed my career. And that's the day I decided, and, and you know, and I decided, look, I wanna decorate bodies. And at first it was like a sleeve. Whoa, we're gonna compose an entire sleeve, you know? And then it went to backs and now I've, I've got a few suits out there that I was lucky enough to get done. Now my style, heavy, illustrative, neo-traditional, whatever you wanna call me, it doesn't really lend itself as well to really cranking out suits you know as you know whereas you're the jap I mean that's the the respect to japanese they they figured out how to cover surface area quickly and aesthetically pleasing and they in literally invented finger waves in a certain way and wind bars they invented things to to make that happen and then you got guys like me coming along doing um completely new school stuff and it's just packed with color and, and that is a so the guys that have gotten body suits for me i just had a guy on my show he re the episode re uh, released two weeks ago ryan uh, johnson good friend of mine you know, it's like 350 hours of tattooing on this dude. But I mean, it's it's all like blue clouds and, you know, but all I'm saying is respect to the guys that get a bodysuit from my style work because it takes so much time. Whereas your style really lends itself to that. But back to circling back, Philip Lou changed my perception of how tattooing is and what it could be. And to this day, I love lord, large format tattooing. And having said that, you had the opportunity to go tattoo with this man. I've, I've never even met him. Tell me about the Philip Blue experience with him. Yeah, well, I met Philip in 99 at a convention in Oakland. It was called uh, Tattoo the Earth. And, uh, you know, it's the first time that, that we met and I saw him work and he was just mind blowing, right? mind-blowing and i knew like this is a guy i need to start you know kind of something with i know it'll probably take a while but this is my ray of light right if there's a sun it's him right and so anything that he did i looked at i studied i understood i just you know it's like a math problem i i got to figure this out how does he do it so fast so clean so like efficient and yet it works you know and i think he has been you know the biggest inspiration in all my career, you know, and he's like the one. So when I got to actually work with him, that was like, all right, my, I guess, career could end here. That's it. This is, I reached the top. There's, there's nothing else. I've done what I wanted, of course, to do, and it's, and it's over. If I get hit by a bus, you know, that's it. I'm happy. I, but of course I did, you know, but uh, he's extremely open, extremely, he'll help you with anything. So, a client of mine that I tattooed, he was moving, I think, to, I think, to Hamburg, you know, to study. And uh, I tattooed him a few times and, you know, I started talking to him about uh, people in Europe who he should get, you know, tattooed by and look up and just, you know, because he was kind of, you know, you know, just getting into it. And uh, I said, you know, well, you know, Philip, he's, I guess, the main guy. You need to find him and get tattooed by him. And that's that. This is, this is your start. So he found him, he got, uh, I guess, connection. He got tattooed by him, you know, something small first. And then he came back and said, you know what? I really like to get my back done. Maybe you, you know, and Philip could you know, maybe do something. And I was like, wow, all right. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could ask him, you know? So I asked him and I said, yeah, sure. You know, just like that, like, really that <laughs> easy? Like, it wasn't any, all right, I guess it was that easy. Mm -hmm. So, uh... 
it was it, it was about I'd say like a two year process. You know, going back and forth with designs and trying to figure out a timeline and you know trying to get three people in at the same time. It's 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 a lot because mm -hmm. he's pretty busy. And a lot I'm of logistics. Busy and it was just well, plus a, you're a flying lot. out to Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we finally figured out a date. You know, so we go out there, and he's in this. You know, it's like a village of Saint Croix, and uh, you know, it's not a small. Well, you know, you know, it's not an easy trek to get to. You know, you got to fly there, you got to take a train, you got to take a hike. It's like it's a process, right? <laughs> but it's an earned, I guess, process. And uh, so, you know, we get there, you know, and he's extremely, of course, I mean, welcoming, and he's, I mean, it's like if you're going into, you know, your family's house, you know, he has tea for you, you know, he just hangs out. They just, it's an amazing experience you know it's the experience everybody should have at least at least once you know and so you know my clients there and all right well i guess let's get to work so we draw everything on right and that takes at least a few hours you know so i do the dragon he does all the background and and some flowers you know it's hard to get tattooed by you know two people at the same time extremely hard on the body mm -hmm. so what should only take you know six hours only takes you know, three hours because of course it's twice the people mm -hmm. But those three hours are as hard as it could be for anybody, mm -hmm. you know? So at the end of that, my client was, oh, he was just done, right? Mm -hmm. And it was only three hours. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, we got it done. You know, the whole, you know, process, he's just explaining why he's doing this and how he's doing that and why this should be here. And and and, and I'm just listening. He's like, I have really nothing to add to this, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just, just a absorbing. student here. Yeah. I'm just like, you, yeah, sure. A anything you say, great, 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 you know? And everything was right. Like, yes, you know, because he's studied, he understands this. You know, he's been around you know, the world a few times. You know, he knows everything about mm -hmm. everything that, I guess, pertains to a suit, at least, you know. Mm -hmm. So just being around him is, like I said, a thing that everybody should do at least at least once. You know, it should be like Mecca. Mm -hmm. You need to go there at least once in your life. You well, know? it should be, especially in the Japanese genre. Yeah. Right. Because if you're a, maybe a neo track guy, maybe your mecca is loose lips or, or, you know, one of these other guys. But yeah, I agree. I mean, in that genre, he's, and beyond his genre, I mean, as a tattoo artist, he's the top of the food chain. He's the top of the mountain. I mean, even as a person, he's amazing. And not just as a tattooer, he's also like musician. You know, he's, of course, a painter. He does, you know, he's, he's more than a tattooer. Do you know how old he is now? I think Ish. he's almost. 60 okay, around there on 60 yeah. is he still tattooing on like steady yeah. rocking it he's still he's still tattooing as a matter of fact i think in i think like february i think we're doing like another collaboration you know oh, nice so i got this i got a client that he wants to do his back again so you know we have to kind of figure that out again but you know it's gonna happen at least at least one more time so if i can get you know, two in the books then That'd That's be awesome. cool. Congratulations you know, on we'll that. We'll see how that goes. That's I'll send super cool. I'll send a postcard. Well, let's let's switch it a little bit here. I have one more thing I wanted. What do you, I know you've apprenticed a few people and, and out of that group, a few of them went on to become very prolific tattooers in their own right. And um, so you're open to the idea of apprenticeships. What do you expect out of a, an apprentice? Like what is your, how do you set the stage for that person? I have an apprentice right now, actually. Okay. You know, and I didn't want to get an apprentice. You never want them, right? <laughs> Some of them, they just, they won't go away. You find like, okay. Oh, man. But he was extremely, you know, persistent. And he was, you know, he kind of waiting for like a year and a half, just waiting to see maybe it'll open up, you know. And uh, I'm like, all right, well, he's. So that's the first part of the test. Yeah. just Are you just still around see. a year and a half later? Or was that and, just a, an idea you had one day? And he was. His name's Sox. You know, that's like, you know, the nickname. But, and so when I. Opened up, you know, this new shop in October of uh, of last year. I said, "Look, if you want, maybe you come hang out, draw, spend a day there, you know. And then, and then we'll see what you got, you know." So he came in and he drew every day, every day, eight hours a day. I'm like, "All right." Four months passed. I'm like, "All right, well, maybe you know, he he really wants it. Maybe he deserves it." But then I'm like, "Oh, what am I doing?" I mean, and uh, uh, that's just one more thing to add on. One more thing. It takes hours away from you, from your family, from work, from the... I'm trying to teach what I know from 30 years into a year of, of him, right? Mm -hmm. One year is not a lot, you know, mm -hmm. but I just approached it really, really different from, I think, a lot of, I guess, artists do. So on, on day one, he, like, started tattooing on day one. 
All right. And you're like, if you're going to you know, do this, you need to be like immersed in it 100%. So I mean, day one, you start tattooing. Day two, same thing for, you know, until you reach 100, right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll see where you're at at 100. So right now he's up to 80 at the moment right now, you know. But, you know, his first one was okay. Now his 80th one is great, mm -hmm. you know, because he's immersed in it. Like anything, if you want to learn like language, move to that, you know, that country, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's like do or die. Like I need to, of course, you know, I need to learn how to speak this or else I can't order this. I can't do this kind of this. So I figure, okay, this is an intense way of doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And he draws and he paints all the time. But I mean, like if anything, yes, that's just a part of it. You know, the person has to be a good person. The shop has to like this person, you know, he's, you know, coming into your ecosystem and he's either going to disrupt it or he's going to blend just right in, you know, and you, he needs to blend right in. I can't have anybody just like, I don't know about this guy or this girl. Just like, no, everybody has to be in the same exact, exact page because you're inviting this this person into this amazing, amazing craft. I mean, it's like you're giving them a life, you know? So, and if I didn't, you know, take him on, I know he, you know, he'd find a way, you know? But I, it's like, I figure, okay, I could explain to him how things are done as, as a person, not just as an, an artist, you know, the way you treat, you know, your client, the way you, you know, show up on time, the way you're on everything with your drawing, with, you know, just be an efficient artist, you know, don't be that guy. I call it being a, be a professional. Yeah. yeah. And don't come in a half hour late, you know, don't do this, don't do that, you know. Don't but come takes, in hungover, don't come in, you know. Whatever. And it takes time to teach that though, yeah. you know, if they never had that, yeah. of course it's not gonna be automatic, you know. It takes a long, long time to understand that, you know. To be an artist, well, he was already like an artist, so he had a head start on that, which is nice, which is easier. I don't have to you show have to, him how to draw. Right. You know, he right. knows that. So, but being an apprentice is, you don't even have to get a mentorship anymore. Again, everything's online. Everything's mm -hmm. there. You don't, you don't need it. You know, it's, it's nice to get it, but unfortunately. I think it's extremely helpful to get it from the right person. Yeah. Like him having that apprenticeship through you, whether he's aware of it or not, just cut five years off of his growth. He's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He'll be five years ahead of the game if he hadn't, yeah. is my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you bring all that up because I have an apprentice right now as well who had already done some tattoos, pretty clean tattoos, and can draw. And it's, I've never done it this way. I've done a few apprentices, but it's always been like two years. First year, I just, you draw, clean, earn. Just earn the fact you're even walking near me. Second year, we start getting into some tattoos. And by the you know, end of that second year, maybe you're tattooed. And with this one, I, I'm doing what you're doing this time. And I just, it's funny you said that because I, I haven't gotten her tattooing yet. She's only been here like two or three months. But just, you know, recently I was like, what am I doing? Like, she's already can draw. She already has even done some tattoos. Like, let's just, I told her because I'm leaving out of town here and I'm going to be gone for a few weeks. But I said, when I get back, you're tattooing. She's like, really? You know, I'm like, yeah, I want, I want to see you. We're going to get down because I mean, Really, I mean, to, to really become a tattooer, the quickest way to learn, and we were lucky as young tattooers because we were allowed to just rip it right out of the gates, which was horrible in a way because we did a lot of bad tattoos. But the act of tattooing, there's no greater teacher yeah, yeah. Than, than doing it, you know. Of course, with someone like you or me above them, so there's not disasters occurring, you know, controlled yeah, but that's interesting. You day one. I like that. That's day a one. new that's cool. Yeah. I, I actually, you know, I think years ago I would have that would have been frowned upon, maybe, but I, I see the value in that yeah. with the right person. Of course. Of Obviously course. the kid could draw. That's another thing I tell people now. No more apprentices that can't draw. I don't want to teach art. Because teaching art is its own. You go fuck come to me when you've got that part figured yeah. out. At least yeah. a rudimentary version of it. I I'll, I'll teach tattoo. Because I'm just, how long is that going to take? You're like, oh, great. Now oh. I'm going to show you how to draw something. And that yeah. in itself could take a year. I don't know. You know, but that, all right. You know, and there's enough enough kids out there that know how to draw already. Right. Maybe they have like a base of, of fine art, which really doesn't help you, you, you that much in tattooing because you almost have to dumb it down. Mm -hmm. Like, look, this is super basic stuff. Just a line, some shade, and some color. Of course, all that kind of composition and contrast comes in like later but if you could do these three super basic things mm -hmm. then you're then you're ahead of it already you know so yeah. i mean all that stuff has to be taught in time anyway you know i mean first tattoos that i did were they were hideous you know i don't think i was 
Oh man, like I don't know how I got into it because I look, I look back at stuff I did like ninety two and three four, and it was just uh, that was not right. If that if that person, you know, it came to me right now, I'd be like, no, nah, maybe you don't have a chance. You know, yeah, I, right. oh my god, it was. Well, we talked about that earlier. It's way more competitive. We were, I was kind of viewed by everybody I got, I apprenticed with as like a shining star because the guys I was asking for apprenticeships were bikers, dudes, and gang. They, they could, they were just bare, they were just working off the flash because they couldn't draw. I actually could draw shit. They were like, wow, we got to teach this, this, you know, genius had a tattoo. And uh, I think uh, today, like you said, I'd probably just be considered average at best as far as my artistic talents, you know? Yeah. Well, that's cool to hear. I was just curious how you kind of, how you handled that one i wanted to hear it on the show but two i pick in your brain is because I, I struggle with it too how do i what's the best thing to be doing with an apprentice nowadays that's i like your method i mean, kind of gave me confidence because i was having trepidation about getting this person tattooing so quickly it was like against the code of conduct or something and i'm like why not you know so that's cool um cool man well this is exciting you're gonna do a tattoo today mm -hmm. on the show and what yeah. I think is really cool about this is you're going to take this client who's probably outside waiting right now. We're going to take a break here in a minute and get this going on. But you're just going to take the machine without drawing on the skin and you're going to do, I think, a dragon head. A dragon head, yeah. I mean, and just from needle to skin. That's it. There's no need to draw because I've already, already done this a thousand times on paper. If I don't understand how to do it now, then I shouldn't be doing this. Right. But, you know, it all comes down to practice, practice, practice. You know, now... These days, I draw almost everything on skin. I don't pre-draw anything because I've already, I've already done my homework mm -hmm. for years on end. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that anymore, you know? So that's already been done. Now, the true test is, can you draw it on skin? Mm -hmm. And yes, I can, you know? And it's not out of uh, ego, but it's just confidence now, you know? I need to assure that, no, I know I can do this. And I know my client, I know they'll either respect it more because it's more, it's kind of, you're there, I'm there, it's, you know, Very it's authentic. getting drawn in and yeah. it's it's extremely custom, you know, it's not just a sticker, right. which of course it's faster, it's easier, but when you draw anything on, you know, it's extremely, extremely, extremely delicate, you know, I can't mess up, you can't wipe a certain way, it's a really different process, you yeah. know. Well, that's cool. I, I mean, heck, whew, I mean, 30 years tattooing, I don't know if I've ever witnessed anyone just take the machine and, and just go right to the skin and make something. So yeah. this is the first for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm stoked to see this. this It'll be cool. fun. I mean, hell, I know you're going to do fine. And I'll tell you, before we, we wrap this segment up, we're going to be moving over to the tattoo part of this in a sec. But I just, there are so many, you know, you know where I went with my career. Whatever label you want to put on there, I call it uh, illustrative color surrealistic tattooing. I'm very proud of my career. I couldn't help it. It's what was in my brain. You can't go against your heart. You can't go against your your authenticity. So I can't change that. But boy, there is many a day I am just so jealous of you. Like really to, to pick a specific genre and slowly hone it over years and years and years is beautiful. It really is. And it, it, it's, it's there's some... I respect that a lot. I, I don't think I understood the value of that back when you were doing, when you first really kicked off, like I do dragons, I do Japanese. It was kind of like, oh, I don't know. I just didn't even really pay attention. Um, and now these many years later, I'm like, what a cool thing to have done. You know, it's like that, is it Hiroshi Dreams of Sushi? That little documentary about that rad sushi chef in the subways of Japan. Oh, have you Hiro? seen that? Hiro Dreams of Sushi? Hiro yeah, Dreams yeah, of Sushi. Yeah. H I R O yeah. hero H -I 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 -I. sushi, and in that they talk, and you might know the word. They talk about a certain type of um, oh gosh, I want to say karate, but it's a, it's just a certain way to live your life where you pick a craft mm -hmm. and you do that craft your whole life. His is sushi, and every day your job is to find one small improvement that you didn't the day before. And in that way, over a 30, 40, 50 year career, you refine one simple. His thing with sushi, yours is dragons and food dogs and a few basic Japanese elements, but you're refining. Each one gets a little better each time. And ah, I love it, dude. I mean, and again, I'm not going to sit here and regret my own career, but I, every tattoo I do, I am starting a new project. You know, they all have a certain 
vibe to them, mm -hmm. but new subject matter, new layouts, new compositions. Um, and I guess that has its own beauty because I'm refining in different ways, but it's it's totally different, you know. Yeah, but that's your personality. Every artist, <laughs> you know, their personality comes out in their tattooing. True, true. If, yeah. If if they have an insane, you know, kind of personality, it comes out in their tattooing. If they got a really, you know, kind of, you know, just subdued, soft kind of personality, it comes out also in their tattoo. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's extremely who you are, and it shows, mm. and it's obvious, and it's great. You know. I mean, you're 100 percent in your tattooing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that compliment. But I, I guess a part of me is just jealous of the, um, how relaxed you must feel in that room when you tattoo people to, to have it, like the ability to just sit down and do this dragon head right now. It, I mean, I know how comfortable you are. I have never found really real, be, I'm never that comfortable when I tattoo mm -hmm. because everything's a new project with new parameters with, I'm, I'm trying to push the envelope. I'm pushing to a new razor's edge. I'm trying new colors. I'm composing differently every time. So I feel like there's, maybe that's why I tattoo a little bit less. Cause I think I, actually the more I say this out loud, I think it is because you could probably tattoo that many hours a week. And because you're so comfortable in that genre that you've mastered and perfected for so many years i'm sure it takes less energy mm -hmm. and i feel like when i tattoo everything is such a new invention every sleeve is a new way of doing it. every back piece that i get i'm just it just takes way more out of me and i can't do it as as much maybe no. it's exhausting and that's the thing you know i mean i've tried things i mean i've tried other things yes you know and but i found what works like for me and like this is what works and i want to be great at one thing which of course the dragon says it's the hardest thing to draw sometimes the hardest thing i've seen some really good ones seen some really bad ones you know mm -hmm. if you're great at anything playing the piano a sport whatever you do that one thing only you know mm -hmm. you practice that on a daily basis hours on end hours on end daily every year you know it's just you know to be great at anything you know just find it and do that one thing all the time because, I mean, now it's a niche now. You don't got to be good at everything anymore. Mm -hmm. You can find one thing and be great at that. You could do, you know, peonies, be great at that only. You know, you could do only, and, and, and you know, and it's out there. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it. It's, you know, you do one thing and that's it. You're set. Because there's enough, I think, clientele out there that that want one thing from a certain artist now you know so you could you could build on one design now you know and you're right i could have done that and you're right it is a reflection of my personality that i just can't help myself i'm always i don't know it's just, it's just me i have to reinvent and oh a new idea in my head i'm gonna tattoo that now but and that's cool but what you're doing is cool too i have a lot of respect for it and i can see now after this many years the value in it like to just zero in it's not just playing the piano it's playing a jazz piano your whole life you know where i'm over here i play piano too but i'll some weeks i will play some jazz songs and then the next week i'm trying to learn how to play the latest pop song and then i'm gonna try some classical today for for a month or two and you know so it's just a different path it's all cool it's all rad it's just it, i guess uh the, i'm feeling nostalgic as i get older really looking back on it all and noticing these nuances that i didn't didn't seem more, so apparent when we were in it now i look back hindsight's 2020 and i can see it like that's cool that's cool what bill did I like that. That's rad. Oh, thanks, well, Aaron. You're welcome. And without further ado, let's let's do it. Let's take a break. Let's get this this guy in here. I'll help you get set up. And let's watch the master of dragons go straight from machine to skin. Let's let's witness yeah. this historical event All on right. chat and tat. You ready? Ready. High five, my friend. Boom. Everybody, welcome back. All right. You just got a new tattoo from Bill Canales. Yes, sir. 
It's awesome. Bitchin'. Love it's, it, man. And I can't emphasize enough. You just taking that machine and just just tattooing with no guidance, no no sharpie, no nothing. And uh it's just a testament to uh, your commitment to the craft and to your particular genre within the craft. It's really impressive, dude. That was really I've never I said it before. I've never seen anyone I mean I've seen people do silly drunk tats. Yeah, yeah, I even course, have course. a few. I've even done a few. But to to really execute and that dragon head was on you couldn't find a mistake in there. It's fucking perfect. To really do that just like that, it's really cool, man. Yeah. Kudos to you. You know what? How about I I heard a rumor that you boys like tequila. Is that true? Mm, a little bit, not much, <laughs> but I'll try it. I guess. I don't know. Let's have a toast. Oh, absolutely. Uh this is my new favorite right now. Chimucos in Yeho. High elevation agave tequila, I guess is what they say it is. If you guys are listening, I do need a, a tequila sponsor. <laughs> All right, let's get a little tequila going for my crew here. There's more if you guys want it, of course. Let's have a toast. All right, grab a glass, my friends. Raise them up. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll, I'll propose this toast to... Most of all, to the beautiful art form of tattooing that has given me so much. It's given you so much. Secondarily to you, um, I said it earlier in the episode, huge inspiration and influence in my personal career means a lot to me. Uh, our friendship means a lot to me. The fact you're here today to have this opportunity to, to, to share your life with me and all the people who listen means a lot to me. And to you, Koi, for just coming along for the ride, just being that guy who's like, fuck it, I'm in. Oh, absolutely. No, it's, <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to be here right now. So thank you for having me, both of you. It's all of our pleasure. So cheers, boys. Cheers. Boom, boom. Link. Oh, yeah. Got a tap. I always forget that part. Before we talk, Bill. As a tequila drinker, honest opinion of that one. Well, I mean, of course, of course, like Nejo is always going to be a lot more. You're more silver a guy? A lot more sweet, you know? Right. I'm more like silver guy, but it is extremely smooth. It's not very bitter at the end. You know, there's no kind of harshness to it. So I can see why it's your favorite at the moment because it is, it is excellent. It's easy to drink right now, you know? And I mean, there's a lot out there, but I mean, it's a great pick, you know? Well, I, I, I'm going to go with you on that. I'm a silver drinker too. You know, when I first really 10 years ago out in tequila, you want to be the cool guy, right? Well, if you're the cool guy, you got the Anyejos because they're the most expensive. So they must be the best. So I'm running through all the 1942s and all this stuff. Like I want to have the good shit at the house. My friends come over and slowly but surely I'm going to Mexico a lot. And the dudes out of Mexico are like, when I ask them what to drink, they're giving me silvers. And I'm always like, silver, that's like the cheap shit. They're like, no, bro, it's just a different type of tequila. Anyway, I'm a silver drinker too for that reason, almost all the time. I avoid the Añejos. They're too, they're just so strong. I mean, they're just powerful, you know, whereas the, the, the silvers tend to be like easy drinking, you know, it doesn't rock your throat and your mouth. This particular Añejo is one of the smoothest as far as just being an easy drinker. Almost reminds me of a silver with a little more smokiness to it. But uh, yeah, you nailed it. I, I agree. And it's, you know, it's just a nice, easy, smooth, you know, kind of, you know, I'm not into whiskeys and a rum and a brand, you know, it's just, I just can't. I tried and this is a thing. I don't know if, of course, tequila is just in my blood or what, but it just, it just makes more sense to me. So and now there's a hundred thousand options out there you know so it's too many options. you know it's even easier you know you could probably try one every day for the rest of your life and probably not have the same have one you again. tried that um comos that pink stuff uh i think it's comos k-o-m-o-s i believe it, it's pink when you pour it into a glass i've had the pink stuff you know but from you know because adam levine he has a pink one and it's a blanco but it's pink only because oh. it's aged in sherry it, barrels or something yeah, yeah you know and it's and it's and there's no you know, flavor to it, but it's just pink, you know? That's how this stuff is, and too. It, it, it looks pink, but it doesn't change how it... it no, no. It looks great. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I understand it's a novelty and it's, you know, it's a cool little thing, but, you know, it's just... I'll try anything at least once, you know, as far as the kilos go, you know, but, <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. Right on. Well, let me, um before we go, we're not going to be here too long, but I, I wanted to ask you, Koi, I mean, you have gotten a sleeve on your left arm and your left leg by Bill, yep. only been tattooed by Bill. A lot of hours, obviously, looking at you spent with Bill. You know, how'd you find Bill? What's the impetus of that? And how do you tell us about that situation? Sure. And um, I'll, I'll try to make it as brief as possible. But uh, oh, I started looking at getting a tattoo probably in 2010. And just, you know, like everybody, like 
what do I want and who do I get it done by? And trying to find like that right artist to do it for me. And so after looking at LA, Orange County, San Diego, it was between Bill and another tattoo artist. And for months, Jess Yen. I don't remember the other one. I just remember the the art, but I just remember I always went back to Bill. Always went back to Full Circle Tattoos website and just like looked at his portfolio. I was just like, if I'm always going back to Bill and comparing other artists to Bill, why not just go to Bill? Mm -hmm. Um, and I got my tattoo right after I came back from uh, a family trip uh, to Vietnam. It was my first time going back home. And I was just when I came back from that trip, it's like, all right, I need to get this done because of the meaning behind what this tattoo would be. And when I finally had my appointment with Bill, I kind of went into it with my own expectation of like, this is what I want. But I also reminded myself, it's like, I'm, a, I'm the canvas. Mm -hmm. The canvas doesn't tell the master, the painter, how to paint. Mm -hmm. So from that, just that one first initial you know, meeting with Bill, uh, just told him, this is what I want. And you have full control on color, placement, whatever you want to do. And after that, just, I think my sleeve took about just under 13 hours. Um, and after that, it was just like, this is the only guy that I w ever wants to tattoo me. Oh, and I've had my chest done by him and my whole leg done by him. My leg was what, 20 hours? Yeah, about 20 hours. About 20 hours. Yeah. Yeah, and each session was not short. It was like eight, eight hours, eight hours, seven hours. So a lot of time spent with Bill and yeah, it was just, always just felt really honored and privileged to be tattooed by Bill. But that's also just because I really respected his art. Um, no offense, but I didn't really understand or know like who you were in the like the tattoo community. Mm. No, yeah, uh, that's understandable for sure. Yeah, I, I just always thought like this is a fantastic artist. And it wasn't until um, the tattoo invitational and just kind of seeing how like you single handedly just brings so many people together. I understood like, OK, this like I don't have just a regular tattoo. You know, I, I have a piece of art that I'm going to be able to carry with me forever. And it's it's super awesome to be able to say that. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. That means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No. That's great. That's cool. Yeah. And that's a, that's a, there's a couple things in there that I think everyone that tattoos needs to remember. One, the collector, do your homework, which you did. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's, you were smart. You took your time. You looked around. You did your research. And the second thing is, as tattoo artists, man, this is one of them art forms. If you do someone right, you give them a good tattoo and you treat them right throughout the process, they're so loyal. Like you said, you'll never get tattooed by anybody else. That's how easy. What other business can you be in where if you give someone a great insurance policy, they'll never go to another insurance agent ever again? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, it's, that's I tell these young tattooers, like, it's not that hard, man. I mean, yeah, you got to be talented. Yeah, you got to put down some good tattoos. But you add that layer of professionalism and treating people with respect and caring about them. They're yours for life. You know, they're not going to take a risk of going to a new guy who might not deliver on all those positions, you know. So, yeah, that's a cool story. That's a, that's a story that I like uh, that my viewers to listen to. Some of these people listening are thinking about their first tattoo or their first large tattoo. So hopefully they can learn a few things from your what you had to share. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Well, Bill... What's next? What's next for Bill? I mean, let's go over the list here. You've got these killer shops. You've got this thriving career. You're, oh, traveling. You got a project with Philip Liu coming up. I know there's probably art shows in your future. I don't, I kind of know that. I know we're not talking too much about that. You got some work before that releases. But what can you talk about? Is there any plans like this year or next year, conventions or anything you want to put on the table that's next for Bill Canales? I'll give a small, I guess, kind of a preview of an art show that I have you know, coming up next year, April, because that's the year. Or, of course, you know, in 2024, it's Year of the Dragon. So that's the year that I want to do as much as I can that year. If I could only draw or only, you know, just tattoo dragons all year, every day, I would. I know that's, that's kind of impossible, but, you know, that's my goal. Only do dragons for all of 2024 if i can i will but you know let's see what happens you hear that if you're out there and you want a dragon in 2024 you're probably gonna go right to the front of the list yeah i'm pretty sure i, I gotta do a tiger here and there and some food dogs and you know things like that you know and and i will but a big thing that i'm excited about of course for next year is i got a show you know coming up in la i won't i won't give a lot of detail but you know all i can say that the show will be extremely bloody 
That's all I can say. So tune in for more, hopefully by the end of this year, and I'll have a lot more. And it's real blood. It's not just, it's not, it's, it's not even, fake blood. Even, it's, can I even say it's whose blood it, a little bit of it is? Sure. It's a lot of your blood. Yeah, a lot of my blood, real blood, no, nothing else, you know. Dude, what a teaser that was, man. So, I kind of okay. know, we're not going to say it, but that yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm wildly interested I in think, see where this goes. I think it'll be great. You know, I think it'll be really different from a lot of shows. It'll be extremely personal you know you know that's for sure and um it's just it's just a sacrifice that i'm willing you know to go and make art or make you know this thing for a dragon you know i'm going to sacrifice myself in a sense you know but and i want to see how and, far and I can on push the it. year i didn't realize it was the year of the dragon actually yeah 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 dude how cool so this only, is an apex moment for you yeah only every 12 years because the next time it comes around who knows, you know? Can't count on 12 years from now. None of us can. Yeah, can't yeah. even count on tomorrow, to be fair. <laughs> 12 years? Fuck, who knows, right? Yeah, it'll be a while. How appropriate. So this is it, you know? Well, bud, I will certainly 100, when you get those dates figured out, let me know. I have to be there for that. Um, and uh, of course, we'll spread it, spread it everywhere we can, get everyone up there to see this fantastic event you're putting together. In the meantime, if you guys are lovers of Japanese tattooing, Japanese genre tattooing, you're, you're hearing from one of the masters out there right now, Bill Canales, Full Circle Tattoo. Um, thank you for coming, Koi, to be a part of our little party today. Absolutely. Where to find you? I mean, we're going to have it in the show notes. Is there anything you want to throw? I know there's your Instagram and you go ahead, your Instagram. And yeah, your Instagram is, uh, you know, I just Bill Canales. And, you know, that's pretty easy. And also I got a website, BillCanales.com, C-A-N-A-L-E-S. And those are the easiest ways, you know, to find me or to you know, look me up or to, you know, send a message, you know. Right. So that's really it. And of course, you know, full circle. We've been around since 08 and, you know, it's been, it's, it's been great. You know, I mean, it's hard work, but it's worth the struggle. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. And you've got a hell of a shop with a hell of a group of tattooers over there. Kudos to you on all that as well. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Keep those comments coming, please. I need to know if you, hey, I get a lot of people like giving me shit about not having certain people on the show. Send them my way. If you got somebody you think needs to be on the show, send it my way. I'm all ears. And also just more from you guys on what kind of guests you want to hear from. We're still trying to figure out who's listening to this damn show. Are you guys a bunch of tattooers or are you guys a bunch of tattoo collectors or are you just not either of those things? Give me messages. We're trying to get the special sauce figured out over here. But in the meantime, thank you for all the subscriptions, all the comments, all the love you guys have been sending me. It's really been keeping me going. I'm having a good time over here. And as long as that keeps happening, I'll keep doing it. So with that being said, until next time, thank you for tuning in. Peace out.